So at this point in the assembly process, your machine should look like what I have here. We've got the linear rails installed onto the gantry. The gantry has been installed onto the Y-axis carriages and the um, gantry has been manually pushed up against the uh, Y-axis linear bearing mounts. Um, the next step is going to be to put the XE carriage on. But before we do that, there's an important step and that is putting the appropriate um, number and placement of shims either between the upper bearings and the XE carriage and the, um, or the lower bearings and the XE carriage. So what are the shims for? The shims are to correct um, any potential error in Z-axis alignment relative to the XY plane. In a perfect world, our Z-axis would be 100% perfectly perpendicular to the XY plane of the machine. Uh, but with manufacturing tolerances and stack ups to consider, uh, that's not always the case. And so to make it the case, we've got to uh, uh, put the shims where they need to go to achieve that result. So in our production facility, we do two things. One is we inspect the uh, gantry and primarily the positioning of the, uh, y of the linear rails on the top and the linear rail on the bottom. And we determine what that error is and what it's, that error's influence would be on the Z-axis alignment. And then similarly, we measure, uh, we do inspections on the XZ carriage and determine um, what its potential error influence would be on Z-axis alignment. So if we have those two pieces of information, we can identify what shims are needed to basically totally eliminate the induced error from the manufacturing uh, tolerance stack up between these two parts. So there's two pieces of information that you're going to need. One is on all XZ carriages, you'll find a tag. And that tag has information about the errors that were measured. Um, for this part. And then on the um, gantry, on the underside, there is a sticker that has uh, punched out the errors um, for the gantry. So you're going to need to look under there, you know, either with a mirror or potentially maybe use your cell phone, and take a picture of that tag to get that information off of there. We're going to use those two pieces of information and put them into the online calculator. The online calculator is going to generate uh, two pieces of information. Number one is how many shims are required? And number two is where do those shims go? So before we get going to that, let's talk about uh, what we're going to need. For starters, we are going to need um, the box of shims. Now we've already been in here before when we shimmed the y-axis rails, but in particular what we're going to need are the lower carriage shims and the upper carriage shims. So you get two bags, they're labeled as such. Now you're only gonna use one or the other, depending on what your error is looking like and depending on what the calculator generates. But um, I'll just go ahead and show you where these go. So this is the upper um, X carriage shims. So if you, were, if you needed to use these, they would get applied up here, right up against the reference edge of the bearings, one on each side. And if you needed to shim the bottom, you would use the lower X carriage shims. These look a little bit different and they get installed right here like that. Now, um, the, when we put the XC carriage up there, I mean, that's an 80 pound component and it would be very hard to manipulate the, uh, the XZ carriage while also trying to feed these shims in here. And that's why up on this machine, I've got grease. And what this grease is used for is you just put a little dab on the back of the shim, you spread it around, and that acts as a temporary adhesive to stick this where it needs to go so it doesn't move around. And that's going to make it really easy to get the uh, carriage up on there and get the bolt holes to line up. And uh, it just makes it a much easier process. So with that, we'll jump on the computer and uh, figure out what shims we need for this particular machine. All right, so I'm on the Langmuir Systems homepage. I'm going to come over to support, navigate over here to MR1 assembly under assembly guides. I'm going to click that. And then on the left hand side here, I'm going to click MR1 assembly. That's going to pull the uh, drop down menu with the contents of the assembly manual. I'm going to click on item number seven, install XZ assembly. And then I'm going to scroll up a little bit here and I'm going to, um, we're going to be looking at shim calculator. 
So what this calculator does is you take the uh, values that are have been punched into the inspection tag on the gantry and the inspection tag on the XC carriage. We input those values and what it outputs is two pieces of information. One is the number of shims that are required and two is the location or position that those shims get installed. So as you can see, um, on the screen, I've taken pictures of my inspection tags, so I'm going to enter that information here. Uh, I'm going to start with upper upper reference edge deviation. This is for the gantry. So for left, I'm going to put zero. For mid, I'm going to put 0 0.001. And for right, I'm going to put zero. Now, it's important to note that in my particular case, um, my mid my mid measurement has a positive value but if your negative um, sign is punched then you would come over here for example you would put negative 0 0.001 that's really important since mine's positive i'm going to put 0 0.001 for that and then i'm going to move on to uh, the tilt and nod deviation so for nod i have uh, plus 0 0.002 and for tilt, I've got zero. Now I'm going to hit submit. And what this is telling me is that I need two shims in the upper position. So now that I have that information, we can uh, go back out to the machine and get the uh, shims uh, selected, um, show, how, show where they go. And then after that, we'll get the XC carriage um, installed up onto the bearings. All right, so now I know that I need two um shims on the for the upper carriages so i'm going to use the um the upper x carriage shims i need four of these two per side and i'm going to use um, the grease to attach them so i got my four shims i'm going to use the grease All I'm gonna do is just coat the, coat the face of the shim with a little bit of grease so that it sticks. And this just gets attached right here. And I'll get another one. I'll do the same for the other side. Okay, now that I've got the shims on there, next thing I want to make sure is that I have the fasteners and the wrenches that I need. So you're going to need um, bag 17. This is the M5 uh, by 12 millimeter screws. Those are used uh, to attach the carriage to the upper bearings. You're going to need a uh, four millimeter Allen head wrench to tighten those. And then for the lower bearings, you're going to need uh, the bag two, five sixteenths by two and three eight long bolts, and a uh, quarter inch Allen head to tighten those. So at this step, what you're really going to want to do is get somebody to give you a hand to get the XZ carriage on there. As said before, it's about 80 pounds. So what really works well is if one person gets the XZ carriage, gets it into position without displacing the uh, shims, and then the other person can get the bolts and the wrench and uh, get them uh, put into position. 
It's really important that when you start tightening the bolts, you're applying pressure towards the gantry because we, we want the reference edges on the carriages to essentially uh, clamp or squeeze these shims into position. When, we, when, we, when that occurs, we know that we're gonna have the, the best possible alignment. So that being said, I'm gonna get some help to come in. Um, I'm gonna pick up the XC carriage and then uh, my helper is gonna uh, put the bolts in. Okay, just grab the cables and pull them over. So while he puts the bolts in, I'm pushing into the into the bearings, like I said, to clamp those shims into position. And they really only need to get one bolt into each bearing at this phase, and then you could then those two bolts will hold this up. Next thing I'm gonna do before I put the lower bolts in, I'm just gonna to check to make sure that I can't see any daylight at all between the uh, bearing blocks and the carriage, and that looks good. So now I can go forward and put all the bolts in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts in, and then I'll be able to go and torque all the rest, put, the, put all the rest of the bolts and then torque those down, and then I'm ready to move on to the next step. <laughs> 